Stand clear of the closing doors, please. Hi, welcome to a Christmas Time in the City podcast. I'm Chris. And I'm Chris. Before we get started, be sure to follow us on social media. We're Christmas Time in the City podcast on Instagram and Facebook, and at Xmas in City Pod on Twitter. Also, feel free to email any questions or comments to us at Christmas Time in the City Podcast at gmail.com. So, did you see Home Alone 2 in the movie theater? No, did you? I did see it. I saw it twice in the movie theater. Oh. I'm jealous. Yeah. I saw it the first time with my dad, I think, and then the second time I saw it with a birthday party. And halfway through in the birthday party, one of the kids had to go to the bathroom, and it was a buddy system situation. And I just told him no. I was like, no, I need to see this. Oh, my goodness. And that was your second time The second time seeing it, I still needed to see it. Oh, dear. Yeah. Christmas spirit, everyone. Exactly. (laughs) If you've ever seen a movie that takes place in New York City, there's a good chance it wasn't actually filmed there. But when it comes to Home Alone 2, Lost in New York, a good chunk of the movie actually was. We've watched this movie way too many times and didn't think twice about it. But after living in the city for a while, some major discrepancies started presenting themselves. It turns out that some of the geographical problems with Kevin in New York City are too hard to ignore. We're going to break down a bunch of the locations featured in the movie and some of the problems that we might have found with them. Before we get started, we should say that Home Alone 2 is an amazingly brilliant film that totally holds up more than 25 years later. Mm -hmm. Some would consider this episode nitpicking, but for the sake of entertainment, let's get into it. The view at LaGuardia International Airport. Kevin McAllister first lands in New York City at LaGuardia Airport and soon realizes that his family is in Miami and he's in New York. Because of its lack of public transportation to and from the city, we don't usually take LaGuardia. That didn't stop us from immediately noticing the New York City skyline in the distance from the window at the airport. LaGuardia is located in Queens, which is too far from the city to have that good a view of the skyline. The Empire Diner When Kevin is first exploring the city, he gets a flyer from Santa in front of the Empire Diner, a real diner that still exists in New York City today. He likely walked down there from Radio City Music Hall, but New York City is cold in the winter and that's a long walk. Maybe I'm just lazy, but I wouldn't walk that far. I also don't have the energy of a child anymore, so who knows. Firecracker Store in Chinatown As far as we know, the building is still open, but Kuangyang Shing and Company closed in 2003. It's almost an hour-long walk from the Empire Diner to this area of Chinatown, so it's very unlikely Kevin would wander that way in his search for explosives, which he'd be very unlikely to find, especially without the help of the internet. The World Trade Center Observation Deck So at this point, you're telling me that Kevin went from Midtown to Chelsea, to Battery Park to peek at the Statue of Liberty, to the top of the World Trade Center on foot in one day during the winter. Also, he's a little kid that's allowed to go up to the top of this building alone. It was a different time, I guess. The Plaza Hotel. At this point, let's assume Kevin took a taxi to this area of Manhattan. The days were shorter, and he'd eventually run out of daylight if he didn't start taking shortcuts. Apart from the last scene where the whole McAllister family spent Christmas morning together, which was filmed at a hotel in Chicago, all the scenes at the plaza are actually filmed on location. Kevin's room, 411, is even available to stay in but with a pretty hefty price tag. The hotel lobby Kevin visits is actually a smaller side lobby that's now only accessible to full-time residents of the hotel. Duncan's Toy Chest The exterior of Duncan's Toy Chest is actually the Rookery Building in Chicago, Illinois, and the interior shots were filmed at the Uptown Theater. However, it is said that the massive toy store is based off of FAO Schwartz in New York City that's recently been located to Rockefeller Center. Back in 1992, the store was at 767 Fifth Avenue in New York City, which is actually across the street from the plaza, so Kevin didn't need to take a limo stock with cheese pizza and soda to Duncan's Toy Chest. He could have easily just walked. Bethesda Fountain While wandering the city, Kevin gets kidnapped by Harry and Marv, which seems like one heck of a coincidence considering how many people are in the city that time of year. He escapes to Central Park, where he jumps in a storage box on the back of a horse-drawn carriage parked along the fountain for some reason. In reality, the carriage is lined up just south of the fountain on Terrace Drive. Rob McAllister's House The address of Uncle Rob's brownstone house is 51 West 95th Street on the Upper West Side 
but the scenes were actually filmed at Universal Studios' backlot in Los Angeles on a set known as Brownstone Street. After discovering the house is being remodeled and empty, Kevin walks down the Upper West Side toward Central Park West, and he runs into the pigeon lady nearby. They befriend each other and go to... Carnegie Hall. This is a world-renowned concert venue that Kevin and the Pigeon Lady go to. I'm not going to completely reject the idea that the two of them could walk from 95th down to 57th, but it seems incredibly unlikely. Don't even get me started on the lax security that would allow a woman and a small child to enter without tickets, let alone a restricted area above the stage. Once again, I guess it was a different time. St. Anne's Hospital for Children After Kevin leaves Carnegie Hall, he passes the fictional St. Anne's Hospital for Children. This building is actually part of Columbia's Teachers College. This means Kevin goes from 57th Street to 120th, just to look at a sick kid in a window. This is where he decides that instead of alerting the police, it's solely his responsibility to stop the burglary. Given he does have previous experience with this sort of thing, I guess it's forgivable. Kevin then runs down to Uncle Rob's house on 95th Street, which is over a mile away from the hospital. He sets up all his booby traps and heads down toward Duncan's toy chest on 59th Street and 5th Avenue. This means Kevin walked about two miles down to the toy store. Next, he walked 36 blocks and multiple avenues down to the toy store, gets Harry and Marv's attention, at which point they chase him all the way back up to 95th Street. Harry and Marv chased Kevin for two miles, and they didn't even break a sweat. Now, if we add up the distance Kevin went from 95th to Carnegie Hall to St. Anne's to 95th to the toy store and back to 95th, that's 12 miles that Kevin walked in that one night. It's even more if you take the fact that Kevin went from the plaza to 95th in the first place. How much stamina does that little kid have? After foiling the burglary, nearly murdering Marvin Harry, <laughs> Kevin draws the bumbling duo into Central Park, where they're defeated by a flock of pigeons and ultimately arrested. That brings us to Rockefeller Center, where we see Kevin wishing upon the Christmas tree, which is right by Radio City Music Hall, which is another 2.6 miles he walked. We obviously love this movie, and even with these glaring problems, this classic will remain in our annual holiday rotation. It still somehow holds up and is genuinely a great fun movie for the whole family. Just be sure to keep the paint cans and kerosene away from the little ones for a while. And that's about it for this episode. So if you like the podcast, please take a minute to rate it and write a review. Contact us and let us know you did, and we'll send you a thank you note and a sticker. So subscribe now and follow us on social media so we can keep the conversation going and keep you posted about new episodes. Until next time, I'm Chris. And I'm Chris. And this is Christmas Time in the City.